Valve is focused on their new games, Half-Life 3 and Deadlock, making their other games feel like they're being left behind. Valve's Deadlock strategy is already passing TF2, without even being officially released. Deadlock's player count has been on a steady rise for a month now, going from 2,000 players at the start of August to where it will hit 200k very soon. The game people call Sweet Baby Slop or any other new buzzword is going to pass Team Fortress 2's highest all-time player count within days if not weeks. Of course the two games shouldn't be compared, but it shows the potential Deadlock has while being in an invite-only test gaining so many active players. Other players can't help but feel TF2 is being left behind as it's still on the Source engine being neglected while Deadlock is getting regular large-scale updates. You add in the lack of large updates across all Valve games right now, Valve seems to be caring more about their other projects instead. Even though CS2 was released not even a year ago, players already noticed that Valve isn't very involved at the moment, and the game is still missing many essential features from CSGO. Just last month, it was reported that Valve is stepping back from the international, handing it over to PGL. Almost like Valve wants to focus on their new MOBA instead of Dota 2. Given Valve's smaller team compared to other studios, Players can't help but feel that Deadlock and Half-Life X are taking resources away from their favorite Valve games. We know Half-Life X has been in development for roughly 3-4 to four years, starting after Half-Life Alex was released in 2020. Valve's level designer Dario Casali said Alex was 4 years of work for a 16 hour game. Of course I won't assume HLX is about to release since it's 4 years deep, but it definitely would be in the latter half of development, which would mean Valve would have a good chunk of employees on the project. In the final hours of Half-Life Alex, they confirmed it started with 4 people, which then grew into an 80 person group by 2019, a year before the actual launch. In 2020, they still had 80 people on Half-Life Alex, making it the largest single-player team ever at Valve. We look at the Valve employee numbers during that period, which was just under half of their total game employees during those years. This means that the other 100 to 120 were probably shifting around the other projects. So with HLX being a few years into development, you can assume a good chunk of Valve employees are currently working on it. As well, in the final hours of Alex, Valve says, we're not afraid of Half-Life no more. Continuing, going from this to a new big thing, which will be even bigger, is pretty exciting. Where it's mentioned privately, most of the team hopes that the next big thing will indeed be a full-scale Half-Life game built not for VR. But given the scope of first-person action games where development teams number into the hundreds, some at Valve wonder if the company wants to take on such a large project. Here we are years later knowing HLX is underway and has been for a while, it makes you wonder how large is the Half-Life team now? They expected and called it to be bigger than Alex, which was their biggest team ever at the time. You also add on Deadlock clearly being a Valve focus right now, it's not tough to assume most of Valve is working on these unreleased games. Especially the fact that they are almost exact opposites. One is a story-driven puzzle game while the other is a competitive MOBA experience. In a recent market report, the MOBA games market reached a valuation of 19.9 billion in 2023, with a projected growth to 42 billion by 2031, doubling the entire size. Some of the key figures list Valve, mentioning those that can effectively leverage technological innovations will be best positioned to thrive. This is what Valve is known for and we are seeing right now with Deadlock. That's bringing many new players to the MOBA genre. The reality is, is that Deadlock will continue to grow up until we see the official release as it's not like the playtest will close. The amount of updates it's getting with new changes, improvements, and heroes just keeps coming every week. It's already been confirmed that Deadlock will have skins or hats similar to Valve's other games. There aren't many details about their cosmetic plans but definitely something that will happen. Especially when you look at their upcoming set of storybooks that will be for the game. They're visual novels that you get to choose how the story goes. That will use some sort of unlock feature to progress through that you get by presumably playing matches. The original one had the possibility in place to earn skins. But there is stories for pretty much every other hero with voice lines ready. Just not pushed live yet. 
but with Deadlock just being an early test without any fancy features or extra game modes, it's still turning into a huge success for Valve, growing in players every day. So of course there is a lot of stuff Valve is planning and working on with Deadlock for its future, but we also have Half-Life X on the horizon. It looks like Valve is testing out a future update for Half-Life 2 and its 20th anniversary, but we know Valve also has voice actors for Project White Sands, which going by the final hours of Alex, they recorded the voice lines roughly one year before release, throughout all of 2019. Project White Sands was first reported to have been recorded sometime between September 2023 and February 2024, which you can speculate we are within the final 1-2 to two years going by Half-Life Alex. So if Valve is this far in development, it must be a big focus behind the scenes. As well, the post credit scenes of Alex confirm a return to the series as you wake up as Gordon Freeman not Alex, and are handed over a crowbar, being told that you have a lot of work to do. This is confirmed to not just be some random dream or vision, but an actual teaser for the continuation of the Half-Life series post-Alex. Same with the secret female scientist that they never gave the name of, hinting that it gives them another character they can use if they make a Half-Life 3. Seeing as HLX is being made for the PC and not VR like Alex, it's Valve's most anticipated game probably ever. Just like GTA 6 for Rockstar, when Valve finally decides to officially announce Half-Life 3 and give us a trailer, it will be groundbreaking. Valve is finally making the game players have wanted for decades, so it's best for us not to rush or really bug them, but rather just wait for it to release. What are you really hoping we get to see in the next Half-Life? Do you want to visit new locations or go back to some old ones? What about following along with the current storyline or completely changing things up? Something like how Half-Life 2 was a big story switch from the original Half-Life. There is overall a lot of possibilities now that Valve is finally attacking the next in the series, something which they have been trying ever since they cancelled Episode 3 in 2011. Of course we shouldn't get hopes up until Valve comes out with their announcement, and even then wait until you finally have Half-Life 3 in your hands, because there is a long list of cancelled Valve games, and multiple versions of Half-Life 3 are included. Assuming HLX starts with the ending of Half-Life Alex, where Gordon wakes up 5 years later at the White Forest base, with the advisor dead and Alex missing, it leaves us with a potential plot for what is next. There is a lot of directions Valve can go with Zen seemingly playing a big part in the next Half-Life, so what will Valve have in store for us? With Valve prioritizing HLX and Deadlock right now behind the scenes, their other games don't seem to be getting the same amount of attention, or at least that's what players feel. Deadlock so far is a big success and is seeing steady growth, so it will be interesting to see where it lands after it gets fully announced. Even Gabe Newell is answering his personal emails about the game and giving players access. So could we see it pass a million, or could we see it pass Dota's all-time player count, or even higher? This is currently without any sort of incentive from players, as it has no sort of drop mechanic for skins, no ranking system, simply just an early invite-only playtest with addictive gameplay. I'm sure long-term, Valve isn't just leaving their other games like TF2, CS2, or Dota 2 behind, but players can't help but feel abandoned by Valve right now. Especially since we know they have updates in the future, like TF2's comic number 7, which have been in the works for months, but clearly just aren't number 1 in Valve's priority scale. I'm sure once Valve's other projects start reaching a farther in-development state, the focus on Valve's current games will return. It might seem like Valve has left us right now, but are you excited for the future and Half-Life 3?